All right, this is the study guide for the uh, polynomials test that we're going to have on Wednesday. The first four questions on your study guide are all dealing with exponents. That's from the first section of the chapter. All right, look at this. We've got a to the first times b to the fourth times 3b to the negative third. All right, I'm going down here. I'm just going to go ahead and put this uh, line for a numerator and a denominator a to the negative 1. I hope you all realize that that is going to be just an a. And I could put a to the first, but why bother? I'm just going to put a. All right. There is no number that goes along with the 3. I mean, I'm not multiplying it 3 times another coefficient. So I can just bring down the 3. All right. That leaves two things to deal with, b to the fourth and b to the negative third. And on all of these, um, on all exponents, you add the exponent when you multiply. So that's going to be b to the fourth times b to the negative third is going to be b to the first. So b to the first is just b. So that would be a for number one. All right, number two. We're looking at 2u v to the fourth times u times v to the fourth. All right, we've got three things going on here. We've got the coefficients, which are numbers, and we've got two different variables, u and v. Let's do the coefficients first. We've got two times, and that would be one u v to the fourth, but it's basically just the only number we're gonna be dealing with is the coefficient of two. Now let's deal with the u's. We've got u times u. That would give us a u squared. And v to the fourth times v to the fourth. We add exponents and you end up with v to the eighth. All right, number three is a little more difficult than the others because we've got a, um, a bunch of different things going on here. We've got the 2 on the outside of the parentheses um, for the 2x to the 4th, y to the 3rd. The, uh, the, the 2 on the outside of the uh, parentheses means everything inside the parentheses is squared. So I'm going to start out. I have to square all three things inside of the parentheses. 2 squared is 4. x to the 4th squared, we multiply uh, the exponents, we get x to the fourth, all right? For um, the y to the third, we multiply that, we get y to the sixth times x to the negative three times y to the third. All right, now we just have to clean things up. We've only got one number as far as the coefficient, the four, so we bring it down. All right, x to the fourth plus x to the negative third that just leaves us with an x to the first. We add the exponents, that just leaves us with an x to the first, so that's an x. y to the six, all right, times y to the third is gonna give us y to the ninth. So the answer for that is gonna be a. All right, we're up to number four now. All right, you can see it's yx to the fourth, the quantity squared times x cubed. On these problems, you have to take care of what's inside the parentheses first. And it's almost like distributing, but we're dealing with an exponent. So on the, um, on the left side, we've got y, and we're going to square it, All right? Then we've got x to the fourth, we're gonna square that. That means we're just gonna multiply exponents. We end up with x to the eighth times x to the third. So not a lot of cleaning up to do on this problem. We bring down the y squared, we add exponents for the x, we get x to the 11th, and the answer for that is going to be d, y squared times x to the 11th. All right, we're going to switch gears here. The next two problems are um, multiplying binomials. 
Uh, I'm going to alternate. Number five, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the foil method, first, outer, inner, last. And then for number six, I'm going to do the box method. Just to show you a little bit. you got to pick which one that you feel most comfortable with. So, as you all know, first, outer, inner, last. All right. The first are going to be, it's going to be 3n times 5n. That's going to give us 15n squared. Outer, that's going to be the 3n times the negative 6. That's going to give us negative 18n. Inner, that's going to be 3 times 5n. That's going to give us plus 15n. And last, 3 times negative 6 is going to give us negative 18. As always, we're going to do something with these inner two terms. We bring down the 15n squared. Negative 18n or minus 18n plus 15n is going to give us minus 3n minus 18. So the answer for this one is B. All right, as advertised, I'm going to do this um, multiplying binomials. I'm going to do by the box method. All right. Um, I've got r minus 6 times 6r minus 6. So I make a 2 by 2 grid and uh, put one on the horizontal, one on the vertical, and now I'm going to multiply. 6r times r is 6r squared. Negative 6 times 6r is going to give you negative 36r. All right. R times R times negative six is going to give you negative six R. I apologize. So the I, I I've never taken time to tell you all, but I do this with a rubber stylus, so it's never that neat. My handwriting is not that great. To, my handwriting is not that great to start with, but when you use a rubber tipped stylus, it gets a little more cumbersome. All right, uh, the last box, negative six times negative six is going to give me a positive thirty six. All right, just like in the FOIL method, I have to combine those two middle terms. I bring down my 6r squared, negative 6r plus negative 36r is going to give me negative 42r, and then I just bring down the 36. Number 6 is going to be D. All right, number seven is a binomial times a trinomial. Now you can do this different methods, but I strongly, strongly suggest on the test that you do this one box method. It's just gonna keep you from making mistakes. So this one is m squared plus five m plus five, the quantity of times the quantity of seven m minus one. Okay, you can see I've got the trinomial on the horizontal and I've got the um, binomial on the vertical. All right, let's just let's go ahead and populate the boxes. 7m times m squared is going to give me 7m cubed. 5m times 7m is 35m squared. 5 times 7m is 35m. All right, start on the next row. m squared times negative 1 is just going to be minus m squared. 5i, 5m times negative 1 is going to give you negative 5m. And finally, negative 1 times 5 is going to give you negative 5. All right, now we got we got to combine all the like terms. We've only got 1 cubed, that's 7m cubed. We got two squares. We got 35m squared um, plus a negative m squared. Remember, you're adding these together. So that's going to give you a plus 34m squared. You got two m's, all right? 35m and negative 5m. Add those two together. It's going to give you a positive 30m. And all you've got is a minus or a negative 5. We bring that down. That makes the answer for number 7 
Let's see, it makes it A. All right, we got two, uh, number eight, number nine. There are two division, um, two polynomial division questions. Uh, both of them are trinomial divided by a binomial. I'm going to split these up. One, I'm going to do long division. One, I'm going to do synthetic. Uh, I'll do number eight as, far as synthetic. All right, so do synthetic. You know that I just want to take the coefficients. Five, negative eight, and three. All right. I'm going to draw a line down here underneath them. Over here, I've got the negative one. So I'm going to make that a positive one for my pivot number. All right. And now I'm going to get started. I bring down the, I bring down the number to the fur furthest to the left, which is a five. All right. Now I get started. One times five is five. All right. Add those two together. I get negative three. 1 times negative 3, I get negative 3. Add those two together, I get 0. We know that this last one here is um, my remainder. So I know that the answer is going to be 5n. Okay, I started up here with second, so I know this is going to be 5n to the first minus 3. That makes my answer... C. Number nine is another division problem. And like I promised, I'm going to do this long division. I think it's good that you see at least one of these two done long division. Do whichever one you feel comfortable with. I'm starting to feel that most of you feel really confident, and some of you even like doing the synthetic division, and that's fine. It does the exact same thing. Whatever you can remember for this test and test going further, like ACT and CERT, I'm all for it. All right. 6n squared minus 49n plus 8 divided by n minus 8. All right, we look at our lead, our furthest to the left, farthest to the left um, part of a part of the um, binomial, which is an n. What does it take to make this n? What do you have to multiply the n by to make it 6n squared? And I hope most of you real quickly realize it's 6n. All right. After I've decided on that, I just multiply 6n times n. That gives me the 6n squared. All right. Also have to multiply the 6n times the negative 8, which is going to give me a minus 48n. All right. Now I subtract these. 6n squared minus 6n squared is 0. Minus 49n minus negative 48, that's going to give me a net of negative n plus 8. Okay, so now going to my next, next uh, level, what I have to multiply n by to get negative n, it's just going to be minus 1. All right, let's now let's finish this off. Minus 1 times n is going to give us a negative n. Negative 1 times negative 8 is going to give us a positive 8. And I hope you all can already see this. Anything subtracted from itself is going to be 0. So there's 0 remainder here. The answer is 6n minus 1, which on your answer sheet is a. All right, uh, number 10 is a um, polynomial to the fourth degree. And I'm going to do this in synthetic division. I think it'll make this one faster. It's x to the fourth minus x to the third minus 37x squared plus 48x minus 36. So <clears throat> first thing we need to do is write down the um, coefficient to each, each of these. We've got 1. Minus x, the coefficient is minus 1, minus 37, or negative 37, positive 48, and negative 36. All right, we're dividing by x minus 6, so we make our pivot number, we're going to make it 6. Like always, I circle it. 
just to make it stand out. All right. To seed the problem, once again, we bring down the uh, f uh, farthest to the left coefficient, which is 1. Now let's get started. 6 times 1 is 6. Add it together, we get negative. Nope, nope, I'm sorry. Add it together, we get positive 5. Okay. All right. 6 times positive 5 gives us 30. We add negative 37 and 30 together, we get negative 7. 6 times negative 7, we get negative 42. Add those together, we get 6, positive 6. 6 times 6 is going to give us 36. The last one is a 0, so that means there's no remainder. Now let's clean this up. We started with x to the 4th, so we know we're going to start this one off with x to the 3rd. 1x to the 3rd is just x to the 3rd plus 5x squared minus 7x and plus 6. So number 10 is D. All right, um, number 11 is a long polynomial to the fifth degree. Um, asking you to evaluate it at, let's see, f of 3. All right. Two different ways you can do this. The first way you can do this is just inserting the 3 into your calculator everywhere there's an x. Like we have went over before, I would suggest you write this out first. All right. Everywhere there's an x, put parentheses. All right. And inside the parentheses, put the 3. This will keep you from making mistakes, especially if the problem is negative. So if you type that straight into your calculator, 3 to the 5th in parentheses times 3 times 3 to the 4th using the parentheses, type this in just like I've got it, you will get the correct answer. The other way is to use the remainder theorem, all right, where you use synthetic substitution, not synthetic division. There's a little bit of difference. We'll talk about that here just in a second. Um, you will get the same answer. The remainder will give you the same answer as comes out of the calculator if you enter this problem. All right, let's do the synthetic division. Let's bring down the 1, the 3, the negative 24, the 16, the 8, and the negative 4. All right, this wants us to evaluate at 3. Since this, this like I said, this is synthetic substitution. So we leave the 3 positive, and that's important. All right. Still on synthetic division, you want to change it to the negative, so it would be negative 3. But this, we're evaluating at 3, we want to leave it at 3. All right, I bring down the furthest coefficient, then I start to multiply. All right, 3 times 1 is 3, add those together, I get 6. 3 times 6 is 18. Add that to negative 24, I get negative 6. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. Add that to 16, I end up with negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Add that together, I get 8. Let me clean that up a little bit. 8 plus negative 6 is going to give me 2. All right. 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. I add that to negative 4, and I get a positive 2. And that makes my answer the remainder, which is 2. Which, if you entered this into the calculator like I've got it, got it here, you would have got a 2 for that also. All right, two ways of doing this problem. You can enter the 3 into the equation, or you can do, use the remainder theorem and synthetic substitution 
and just know that the, the, the answer that you get as a remainder is, will be the same as the number you get if you entered this into a calculator. All right, uh, next problem we've got is a binomial to the fifth power. All right, for this one, we're going to be using the binomial theorem, and you're going to be using the Pascal's triangle that you created, and I hope that you brought with you. All right, so if you look down to the fifth degree, and on your Pascal triangle, the fifth degree is going to be the sixth row, because the first row is going to be zero, second row is going to be one, third row is going to be two, blah, blah, blah. So you look down to the fifth row, or the fifth degree, which is the sixth row, and you can see the coefficients you have should be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. You can also tell that that's going to have six elements in it. All right, you know that the elements inside it are going to be B and 3. So I just put those down. Well, I've already got them down here on this, on this sheet um, six times. All right. So you should remember that the exponent for one is going to be decreasing and the exponent for the other is going to be increasing. So this is going to be 3 to the 5th, b to the 0. 4th, 1. 3rd, 2. All right, now I'm going to change up here and I'm just going to just work on the 3s. So you can see the 3 went to the 5th, 3 to the 4th, 3 to the 3rd. It's going to be 3 to the 2nd, 3 to the 1st. 3 to the 0. All right, the B is going in a different direction. It's growing. It started at 0 for an exponent, 1 for an exponent, 2 for... So it's going to be 3, 4, 5. All right, that takes care of your exponents in this. All right, next thing you want to do is you have to take care of your coefficient. You have to take those numbers off of the Pascal's triangle. So this can be a 1. This is going to be a 5. This is going to be a 10. This is going to be a 10. This is going to be a 5. And this is going to be a 5. All right, I've got to put pluses in here. All right, now we're ready to clean this up. All right, first one. All right, but let's look to, to the far left. All right, we got 1 times 3 to the 5th times b to the 0 over here. Okay, so 1 times b to the 0 is just 1 because b to the 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. So this is going to be 3 to the 5th power. You put that in your calculator, you're going to find that it's going to be 405. Oops, I'm sorry. I did that wrong. Let me erase that. That's going to be 243. All right. That's our first one. Let's do the second one. We've got 5 times 3 to the 4th times b to the 1st. We can bring that b to the 1st down, and I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as just b. Okay. 3 to the 4th is the same thing as 9 times 9. It's going to be 81. 81 times 5 is going to be 405B. All right. On the next one, we can just go ahead and bring down our B squared. We've got 10 times 3 to the 3rd. That's going to be 270B. Because 3 to the 3rd is 27 times 10 is 270. Okay, plus. All right, the next one we're going to have b cubed. And take care of the numbers. 3 times 3, which is 3 squared. 3 squared is going to give you 9 times 10 is going to be 90 b cubed. Plus, bring our b to the 4th down. We've got 3 to the 1st times 5, which is going to be... 15, and the final one, oh, I see a mistake I made earlier, let me just go ahead and change that, erase, All right, our final coefficient is a 1, 
So for this one, we've got 1 times 3 to the 0, which is also 1, and b to the 5th. All right, that's our final answer. 243 plus 405b plus 270b squared plus 90b cubed plus 15b to the 4th plus b to the 5th. All right, so if you get any questions, please feel free to contact me. I hope you find time to study this study guide.